Hi everyone, this is Ramesh Babu. Welcome to my lecture on Intruder Alarm Systems, Module 3 of Safety and Security Systems, which is part of Building Management Systems. Yeah, if you look at the various aspects covered in Building Management Systems, Access Control and CCTV an essential component of the building management system which is for securing the building and within the integrated building management system access control and security systems play a major role in securing the building from intruders intruder along is an important component in the safety and security systems. So in this module, I will be talking about intruder alarm systems. So in the previous module, we have seen access control systems and CCTV. Now we are going to see intruder alarm systems. If you look at intruder alarm systems, the main objective is to detect unauthorized intrusion. In general, this is pertaining to the people only. So, when an unauthorized intrusion happens in a building, the objective of the system is to generate an alarm and transmit a pre-recorded message over telephone. So, this means, if a building is compromised in security by means of an intrusion, you can see the alarm activator within the building or if the device is connected to a telephone dialer, you can have the same information transmitted to the uh, concerned person to whom the system is connected. So if you look at the components, we have sensors and detectors, and then we have alarm initiating devices. The important thing in intruder alarm system is the control panel, which receives the signals from the sensor. In other words, the detection happens, which which is an information which is transmitted into the control panel. Based on this, the control panel will take a decision which will be connected to the alarm initiating devices which sounds the alarm. If in case the control panel is linked to a telephone dialer, so it can potentially dial the occupant or dial the concerned person to creating the alarm. If you look at this particular sketch, a simple example of a motion detector is, imagine uh, a device which is kept here, so you can see a ray in the room. So this ray is a kind of emitted energy, so we have energy being emitted into this room and the ray is reflected and the, mo the equipment is in working condition. Once if an intruder enters the space, there is a compromise. So this particular reflection pattern is disturbed. This is what makes the detector to sense the presence of an intruder. So in sensor is an important component in intruder alarm. So in sensor, we have magnetic contact, we have glass break detector, vibration detector, panic or emergency push button and PAR is passive infrared detector. So all this forms part of the intruder alarm system. Now we go to glass break detector. It is a recent uh, technological invention where the alarm initiation is because of the detection of uh, acoustical sound created by breaking of glass. So imagine you have a uh, lot of windows in your space and if any particular window breaks, the glass uh, breaks and it creates a uh, shattering um, or uh, what you call high frequency tinkling sound. This sound is a unique sound which is the reason for activating the detector. So the, that means the detector doesn't have to be installed in each and every window. It can be installed in a space. Within that space, 
if any of the glass panel breaks the alarm will be activated or the detector will sense the presence so the only problem with the glass break detector is it can create a false alarm because there can be a confusion of breakage the breakage can be a table wire or any other um, unfavorable noise which can disturb and activate the detector so a glass break detector will look like something like that the next one we are going to see is disk PIR which is passive infrared detector disk PIR offers a 360 degree protection pattern it is installed in a ceiling which is 3.6 meter uh, which can work till 3.6 meter the floor coverage is approximately 10.8 meter and it does has a 12 volts DC supply this is the diagram for a disk PIR as you can see, the disk PIR is installed at the ceiling for a height of 3.6 meter. You can see the total diameter covered is around 10.8 meter. The same PIR detector can be installed horizontally also. As you can see here, we have the device here which is installed in a horizontal fashion where an intruder, when he passes through the space, the detector will detect the presence. Now, before we, I explain this case, I'll go to the working of the PIR. So, the one important thing in PIR that we have to note here is, it does not emit any infrared rays, but it only detects the infrared rays. Why? Because the infrared rays is detected from the warm bodies of the human being or animal which is moving through that area. Because all human beings or any living body generates infrared rays which is being sensed by the PAR. So once it, if the detection happens, there is a change in the infrared level. So in PAR, it has a pyroelectric sensors. There are two sensors. Now I go to this edge. Now you can see there is one sensing element, one sensor here, another one, two. The same thing is shown here in plan. So we have sensor 1 and sensor 2. So as soon as a person enters into the first region, so this sensing device will create a fluctuation which you can see here. And similarly, when he goes to the second detecting uh, element, you can see the fluctuation which is happening here. So this, okay, now I, you can read this one. PIR has pyroelectric sensors which produces an output voltage when exposed to IR rays. The sensor, as I have shown in the previous sketch, has two sensing elements. When a person crosses the focusing beam area of the PIR, the sensors are exposed to IR one by one. So one by one in the sense, the first sensing element and the next sensing element. That is how, that is how your PIR will work. Now, let us go back to the sketch here. Uh, where we were talking about sensor and detectors and now we are going to see control panel. So, control panel is an important device into which the detectors and sensors are connected. Not only that, the control panel gives instruction to the telephone dialer or it gives instruction to an alarm device to initiate the alarm activation. There are two types of control panels, which is key operated and code operated. So, wherein you need a key to open it, or sometimes you need a password number to enter. As you can see here, you have to type in the code here to activate the, or to open or do some programming in the control panel. And the display is sometimes LED and LCD. Yeah. This is an important sketch of the control panel. So. As you can see, the control panel is linked to lot of devices. So here you see magnetic contact, which you have, which I have discussed in the module one already. Next is the glass break detector. Then you have smoke detector. You have PAR, which is motion detector. Then we have emergency buttons and then temperature sensor as well. So similarly. Uh, if you look at all these devices, these devices sense the presence. 
detect and then send them to the control panel. So that is the duty of each and every device. These devices do not create an alarm. Okay. So for alarm to be activated, this module has to be linked to the alarm. So as you can see, it is linked to a siren and a stroke. So this creates the sound. Now, not only that, you can see the device is connected to your central monitoring station. Sometimes it is connected to your telephone dialer and also through internet also. So now, what is the purpose of this device? The purpose of this device is once detection happens, the system will either alert and alert the siren or it will send the information to your telephone dialer. The telephone dialer uh, will dial to the relevant person and alert the presence of some unauthorized intrusion happening to the building. So this device is also connected to fire alarm systems because in an emergency of fire detection, as you can see here, smoke detection. Smoke detection uh, detects the presence of smoke which also needs to alert the occupant. This is a control panel again. So, for the control panel to work, the input voltage is 230 volts and it has a battery backup. And there are multiple types of zones for intruder alarm, which means you can detect exactly in which zone the intruder has entered. And it also has smoke detection zones. In a fire, you can find out which zone of the building is being uh, affected by a fire. And as I told you, the output is a siren output, which creates a noise. You have a keypad for programming and, and this telephone line connectivity is for uh, alerting the occupants when they are away from the building. So now we go to the alarm initiating devices. The main purpose of these devices is to create noise. So now, in intruder internal sound, you have a buzzer and then sometimes you have a speaker. So that is important because sometimes buzzer creates only noise. A speaker can give an instruction. The instruction can be like fire in the building, please evacuate immediately, or intruder inside the building, evacuate or take preventive actions or something like that. So if you look at the external sounder, this happens outside the building. So this creates a piezo sounder or it creates a blaster sounder. So these devices are primarily there to create a uh, noise outside the building. The third one is remote signaling devices. So before I go to this, I'll uh, recollect this one. Internal devices create noise which is heard inside the building. External devices create noise which is heard outside the building. Remote signaling devices do not create noise but they give alert to the people uh, or the owner or the relevant people who is outside the building. So that is through a telephone dialer or speed cluster. And also there are light indicators like LED and strobe lights. So LED and strobe lights, you see, the purpose of that is um, people who are unable to hear. Okay, so if they are unable to hear, they can see the strobe light. and get to know that there is an uh, alarm being activated. So it is nothing but the same thing which you see in ambulance or police vehicles where you can see the strobe light. So with this I am completing the uh, module 